So here we are taking a look at the uh, system requirements for installing Android. We're going to talk a little bit more as the process of installing goes forward, but I just wanted to start by taking a look at what is the requirement, what do we need if we're going to install Android uh, and build it for ourselves. So as you can see here, uh, the Linux requirements, 14.04 uh, trusty is required for building Android. Uh, there's going to be some Java requirements for JDK, JDK uh, 7 and 8. Since we're going to be working with Lollipop, Marshmallow, Nugget, and Oreo. Um, and really, it doesn't take a whole lot. Um, a big misconception is that you need a huge, powerful machine. I've built Android on laptops. Um, actually, most of my early builds were done from a laptop. So don't be afraid of that. Here, I happen to be using uh, Suzy Linux Enterprise, and I'm going to be running some virtual machines. It just works out better for the ability to um, swap between different versions as we're going to be building for everything from Lollipop to Oreo, but you can do it any way that works best for you. I highly recommend installing on a physical machine. Uh, here I'm just going through setting up. As you can see, I'm going to be using the CD for uh, Ubuntu 14.04. Seems a little old, but it works just great all the way up through Oreo. Um, but I've also used uh, Oreo or built Oreo with uh, 16.04 as well. A lot of people like to use uh, some different uh, um, versions, but I really don't think that's necessary. Uh, I recommend that you actually use what they design Android on, which is Ubuntu. Just setting up some networks here. Um, storage size, 250 gigabytes is going to be plenty of machine to build an Android uh, platform. Uh, if you're installing on a physical machine, it's going to look very similar, of course, just not within a window like I have it here. Um, there's virtual. Uh, Tons of different virtual technologies that you can use, virtual box. Uh, I happen to be using KVM here with Clemu. Um, but there's also then um, lots of different softwares available to you, especially if you're on a Windows machine. I recommend going the route of virtual box. Um, or if you have a Macintosh, that might be a good way to go is to use virtual box. And while we install this, we're going to talk about what we're hoping to accomplish by uh, this video series, what we're hoping to uh, learn as we uh, strive to build Android variations. So what would be the, uh, the minimum specifications then really goes back to what works for Ubuntu. Uh, like I said, I've done this on a laptop. I built all the way up through uh, Marshmallow um, using a laptop, and then I just happen to be gifted a, a nice server machine that I'm running right now. So it, it's definitely doable. Um, the laptop I was using at the time only had a uh, AMD 2 gigahertz processor, dual core, um, and uh, four gigs of RAM. So it's definitely, definitely doable. I'm just checking on a few settings here while I while I get started, make sure that we're all ready to go. Um, a couple of benefits to using a virtual machine as to using a physical machine is that you can take snapshots. You can copy, as you're going to see at the end of this uh, video here, I'm going to actually make a copy of what we just made uh, four times so I can have one for each version that we're going to be building, one for Lollipop, one for Marshmallow, one for Nugget, and one for Oreo. And I can do that just by right-clicking and, and, and copying as we'll see a little later. So that is a big plus if you plan to build for multiple platforms. There is a difference between Lollipop 
and Marshmallow, which both use Open JDK 7, as opposed to if you're building uh, Nugget and Oreo, with which you're going to use Open JDK 8. So uh, it can be a little difficult to maintain both on the same machine, and that's just why I'm going to go with with a virtual machine here. Let's see, let's set our scaling. Always. There we go. So this is what you're going to see if you're installing Ubuntu, if you've never done that before. It's uh, it's very straightforward. Let's see if I'm clicking here. No, that's okay. Screen's a little tiny here. Let's see if I can make it a little bigger so we can read what we're looking at. There we go. Um, but I do recommend if you're just building a particular version of Android, say you're going to do the newer material like Nugget and uh, Oreo and Onward, that you just go ahead and physically install this on a machine. Uh, the performance is going to be a little better and uh, I, I think just overall you'll be a lot happier with the uh, with the setup. It's a little easier if you're physically installing a machine as far as making sure that you can connect to USB devices. Let's see here. Yep. Okay. So we're just going to go ahead and erase the the blank disk in this case. But if this was your physical machine, you'd want to. Uh, make sure that you had uh, sufficient space and you're going to go ahead and erase that and install that. And of course, I am the Alaska Linux user and that is because I live in Alaska and I use Linux. So <laughs> I'm sure you all figured that out already. Okay. Type in super secret squirrel. Really short password here. Just using a uh, short password just for this course to make it a little easier as I go through. Uh, obviously, for security reasons, you should use a much longer password. Anyways, during this portion of the, the video, you're just going to see that it's copying files, it's installing files. And, and uh, while we do that, I'd like to talk about what we're hoping to accomplish and uh, do during this course. So my intention with this video series was actually to answer questions that have been asked to me by members of the XDA community. Um, I am by no means an expert on Android ROM building or kernel modification. However, uh, I have done uh, work for the Samsung Galaxy S4. I have done work for the, uh, the Galaxy Note edge um, as well as uh, creating ROMs for the LG4 and uh, excuse me LG V4 and uh, assisted uh, assisted some folks with uh, building various ROMs for for instance the Samsung J7 things like that um, I have built all the way from lollipop through Oreo and so occasionally I'll get questions from users who are just getting started and they want to know how do we uh, do this? How do we set things up? How do we um, perform various actions? Or uh, how do we modify kernel? How do we uh, build our own ROM? And so I just wanted to put together a video series that would show you beginning to end, how do you build a ROM? How do you do kernel modification? And uh, we're going to talk about everything from building AOS uh, P, which is the Android open source project, the basically the bare bones of Android, uh, to doing custom ROMs such as Slim ROMs, Pac-Man ROMs. We're going to take a look at um, oh, AOKP and AOSCP or Cypher OS. And we're going to build everything from Lollipop through Oreo. We're going to look at building custom ROMs for phones that are already available. We're also going to look at how do we add 
um, custom ROM information that we need so we can build custom ROMs for phones that aren't available for that particular ROM. Uh, we're going to look at everything from the Android manifest uh, to um, repo syncing. We're going to look at how we can add new programs through source code. We're going to look at how we can add new applications that are pre-built. We're going to look at how we can change the default background. We're just really going to try to cover everything that uh, the typical ROM developer is going to want to do when they're developing their own ROM. Uh, as well as looking at ROM development, we're going to look at kernel development. And we're going to walk through adding governors to your kernel, I.O. schedulers to your kernel. We're going to look at um, several examples where I have overclocked a kernel or undervolted a kernel. We're going to uh, look at things such as tool chains, where to get them, how they work, what's the difference. Um, so hopefully this will be a really informative course. Uh, this, this, I call it a course, it's not really a course, it's more like a video series just to help explain some things to people. But the, the overall idea is who this is for is the person who is getting started with Android development. You maybe already have done things like Flash uh, custom recoveries like Twerp or Clockwork Mod, and you've maybe used Fast Boot or ADB before, but you're not, for instance, like a Fast Boot Ninja or a, a ADB uh, you know, uh, expert. And we're going to dive into those subjects. We're going to look at how can we pull good logs with ADB? How can we use Fast Boot to flash things? We're going to talk about building OTA packages or what you would call over the air packages um, and how to, how to implement those. So we're just going to take a really wide brushstroke and look at everything. But hopefully, while we're doing that, we're going to spend some time diving into the nitty gritty of why we do it that way or how it works. And uh, maybe we can see a couple different ways to do things. During the build processes, we're going to run into errors. And I'm purposely leaving the errors in because I want you to see them and I want to see us work through them together. And hopefully that'll help you because when you start developing your own ROMs, you're going to see errors. Or when you start working on your own kernel, you're going to see errors. And we want to see those errors, and we want to talk about them during this video series, so that way we can learn what some avenues we have to try to fix them. Where can we look to get some help, and uh, what what uh, tools are available to us? So hopefully that'll be a big help for um, those of you that are getting started. Uh, if you already know how to build ROM, and maybe you just uh, want to look at some of the finer points. You're welcome to uh, use this video series as well. Uh, a lot of the material may be stuff you already know. And so you might want to just skip to the videos that pertain to what you are hoping to learn about. And that's, uh, that would be great. If it could be a help to you at all, I think that's, that's awesome. So um, let's see here. How are we doing with this all process? Still a little ways to go. And uh, hopefully I don't rant and ramble on too much for you while we're while we're waiting for this to install. Let's see here. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of different Linux versions work different ways. Um, I've had a lot of people have success building Android using things with such as uh, Linux Mint or um, various other distributions. I highly recommend for your first time that you go ahead and install Ubuntu. That's what they um, specifically use to build Android. And I think that would be a good place to start. Once you have successfully built Android, if you want to try something else, that would be, I think, a good time to do that. So here the installation is complete. We're going to restart our virtual machine. Of course, this is a little different 
restarting virtually than restarting a physical machine, but in the end, the result's gonna be the same. So before we move on to the other videos, I do want to take a moment to see how we can set a few things up here. So here we've got our desktop. Let's see, I'm just adjusting a few settings here. Um, make sure we're set here for our CPUs, those are fine. Make sure we got our settings correct here. Uh, when you're installing a physical machine, obviously you don't have to worry too much about that. Let's see. Okay. Obviously, it's going to tell us there's some newer versions available, and uh, in, you can go ahead and decline upgrading if uh, if you're just going to follow along with me here. Like I said, I have successfully used the Ubuntu 1604. I particularly want to use 1404 because we're going to be using the older OpenJDK 7, so we can build things like uh, Lollipop and Marshmallow uh, as they uh, move to OpenJDK. Eight for Ubuntu 1604 and up. Let me scale the screen here. We're just way too small for us to see anything. So let's change our display settings. Uh, if you're not familiar with Ubuntu, it's fairly user friendly, pretty straightforward to use. Um, we're going to be spending most of our time at the command line. I would say about 90% of our time at the command line. So hopefully that's uh, something you're uh, comfortable with. If you're not, that's okay. We're going to see all the commands as we type them together. So, uh, so you can just follow along and kind of learn that way as well. So one of the big things that I recommend you do is uh, you pin the terminal to the start bar. So we're going to need that. So, all right, we've set up our virtual machine. Now I'm just going to make some copies of it. And the reason I'm making some copies is so I can do the different variations that we're going to build of um, Android. Again, if you're just building one version of Android, you really don't need to do this. Or if you're just building Nugget and up, you probably really don't need to do this. Um, it just works out a little better for this video series for me to have separate containers for each one with separate hard drives that I can just turn them on and off. So let's get started. <laughs> 